Hello everybody, welcome to The Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today is a Patreon request from uh, D-Man Demand 900. I'm talking about the 1995 album by Fila Brasilia, Mame That Tune. Alright, Fila Brasilia. Uh, this 90s downtempo outfit, shockingly enough, is not from Brazil, but instead a duo of white guys from the UK. Steve Cobby and Dave McSherry. Never covered any bands like that before. Not gonna lie, when uh, this request came in, I wasn't particularly looking forward to it. I mean, I'd heard of these guys in passing before, though I'd always seen them mentioned in the same breath as bands like Thievery Corporation, who I'm not really a huge fan of, personally. <laughs> well, they do have some albums I think are pretty solid, but their particular style of world music arrangements, including some inspired by Brazilian music, always felt kind of watered down and unimaginative to me on average. And looking at the name Fila Brasilia had me thinking I was gonna get something like that. As a result, I'd never really been motivated to look into them on my own time. Though once the request came in, I found out that this band is a lot more focused on jazz breaks and resembled the kind of thing that would have come out of the early Ninja Tune roster. And while that was more intriguing, I'd also semi-recently done a Patreon request for a very similar album actually from Ninja Tune, uh, Funky Porcini's Love Pussycats and Car Wrecks. An album which, while I generally liked and was a grower, also left me wanting to like it a lot more than I actually did didn't remotely deliver on what I'd expected given its wacky album cover, and just didn't leave me thinking the artist who made it was one that I'd really enjoyed looking into more in depth. I was kinda worried the same thing was gonna happen for Mame That Tune, and looking into the band's catalog and seeing such album titles as Mess, Luck Be A Weirdo Tonight, Power Clown, and Dicks, I'd wasn't exactly confidence inspiring. Still, the requester sent me this. He gave me the option to either cover this sophomore album here from 1995 or their debut from 94, uh, Old Code's New Chaos, which appears to be very different from the rest of their catalog and focuses more on, like, deep house arrangements. I opted for this one as the requester said it was more representative of what the band was really all about, and I figured that would give me a better evaluation on whether or not I'd actually like these guys. I didn't go in expecting to hate this album or anything, but I had a sinking feeling it probably wasn't going to be all that interesting to talk about. But I've been sitting with this thing for about a week now, and actually turns out this is really good. <laughs> like, I'm not going to tell you I think this stuff is anything life-changing. I think it works best as background music to be put on while you're doing something else. It's not really the kind of thing that's like designed to be like actively sit up and listen to. Like, the Thievery Corporation comparisons aren't wrong. Uh, while the ingredients that go into their sound are different, the general relaxed vibe their music gives off is pretty similar in that way. If you listened to this album and didn't care for it because you thought it was boring, I would get it. But that's the reaction I thought I was going to have, and I actually found myself getting really consistently pulled in by all of it. Nine tracks, all running on pretty long, ranging from six and a half minutes to eleven minutes, and none of which have an absolute ton of progression over time, but I enjoyed all nine of them. All the chill grooves they created were really solid for what they were, and the overall vibe of everything never wore out on me. Could make an album that runs on for over an hour make that time feel a lot shorter than it really was. I've listened to this thing like seven times over the past couple of days, and I've never gotten sick of it. Going through individual tracks, the album starts quite strong with Dave Yang and Steve Yin de Swish to Swish. Uh, obnoxious mouthful of a title aside, this is a really nice mix of shuffling breaks with funky synth and guitar licks going over particularly satisfying progression of electric piano chords. I like how that loop of electric piano starts with like this one chord that only lasts like a sixteenth note before immediately moving down, like that. The, the way that sounded actually kind of reminded me of Metamatics. I feel like he had a couple of tracks that did that. A Z in two L's appears to be the most popular track on the album, though I'm not really sure what about it stood out as uh, special to people in the grander scheme of the album. The samples of what sounds like some kind of like African chanting going over the mix of filtered synth bells and warm pads are all pretty nice. And there's a pretty neat change up into a more up-tempo drum and bass-ish beat a little past the halfway mark. Still a very solid track that's about equally as good as everything else here, but I don't know if it would have stood out to me as single material if it hadn't already been released as one. <laughs> I picked it as my least favorite here, but I think that's more of a testament to how consistent this album is quality-wise than me saying that like, oh, it's like worse than other stuff here. 
Going from there, Leggy uh, features a lot of muted pad progressions, deep bass lines, filtered synth effects, and lively percussion. Got a few varied horn blares to help give the track that's light jazzy edge as everything else here. Uh, also not a major standout, but still very solid stuff. But if you wanted a major standout, following track At Home in Space has to be my favorite track in the bunch. The core loop of low-key strings and flutes is so freaking nice and perfectly sets up that spacey mood it's going for, and then it slowly builds up all these other funk grooves on top of it with all these various guitar loops that can simultaneously bang and feel just chill enough to still fit with the vibe of the track. This was excellent, I loved it right away. And then the next track, Six Foot Wasp, goes even harder. A lot of rough, distorted guitar pads acting as the bass, and are a more subtle texture than you'd expect, with lots of banging breaks and synth blips and funk guitar licks going over it. Uh, the track also features a very anti-consumerist slant, executed in a similar way to Orbital's Philosophy by Numbers. Halfway through, there's a whole bunch of, like, random samples from advertisements making lots of obnoxiously consumerist statements like, the double action eases the pain, and some things are worth paying a little more for. And in case you were still unsure of where they stood on the issue after hearing that, uh, the track eventually culminates in the last two minutes or so, which liberally samples a stand-up routine from the late Bill Hicks, where he just tells all advertisers to kill themselves. Just going off on the entire world of marketing and advertising and tell them to rid the world of their evil fucking machinations. Just stop putting a dollar sign on every fucking thing on this planet! These samples did throw me off a little when I first heard this, but I do fuck with that message. Especially 26 years later when the advertising world has only gotten a million times more obnoxious and unignorable and nearly all of society has physically been built to, to rely on it. Yeah. Anyway, getting back to the music, uh, next we got Slacker. Uh, this track has a bit more of like a house techno feel to it, and it's more straightforward dance beats and synth arpeggios going over lots of wailing synth pads. It's the longest track in the bunch at over 11 minutes, but I honestly wouldn't have even noticed if I didn't see it for myself. Like, the track right after it is the shortest in the bunch at six and a half minutes, and that went by about equally as quickly. Said track, Harmonicas Are Shite, is in fact another one of the biggest highlights. Uh, this one's got a lot more of a dub-centric approach in its mix of deep bass lines, thumping beats, and of course wailing harmonicas. I was ambivalent on this one when I first heard it, but it grew on me pretty quickly and is now one of my bigger favorites on here. Extract of Pineal Gland is not as big a favorite for me. Uh, the guitar loop in the beginning is a little jerky and doesn't pull me in as effectively as some of the other hooks on this album, but most of the track just focuses on simple, laid-back drumming and bass and a few little cascades of synth bells. Still a really solid groove to it and just as consistently investing as everything else here. That was another big grower for me. And then finally, the album finishes with Subtle Body, the other uh, most popular track that most fans seem to have latched on to. I think the hype for this one in particular makes more sense to me than a Z in two L's, though. It's the big emotional ambient closer. Not much to it besides a bunch of loops of electric pianos covered in reverb, very subtle, spacey synth pads that float up and down, and a few little wind chimes on the side. And you don't really need anything else. It's about as satisfying a closer as an album like this could have had. And, uh, yeah, that's everything on Mame That Tune. Really don't have much to complain about here, I really liked all of this. And in direct contrast to that funky Porcini album, this is the kind of project that now has me intrigued enough to want to look into these guys a bit more. I think I've picked the best possible starting point. I've previewed through little bits of their other albums, and most of it sounds like it'd also be up my alley. Their debut and uh, Power Clown are probably the other two that intrigue me the most from the bits I've heard. If there's another album of theirs that's really resonated with you, then make sure to tell me about it. I know they've got a pretty decent sized dedicated fan base. But in the meantime, when it comes to main that tune in particular, yeah, I thought this was great. There was so much working against this album, I really didn't go into it expecting it to resonate with me as much as it did. And honestly, I still don't expect it to be for everyone. But this is just a really solid little collection of jazzy downtempo. I can definitely recommend giving it a shot if you're into this kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I can give it a solid 8 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters, they're awesome people. You want to add yourself to that list, link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.